Hello and welcome to another edition of Tailgate Talk. This is the Class C edition, the Week 3 edition with Cali Oaks. This is Randy Whitehouse and we're previewing the Class E games this week. There's uh, there's five Saturday afternoon games on the slate this week. That's why we love Class E. There'd be six if Darago wasn't playing at home this week. I think week. I actually heard that Lisbon Booth Bay has been moved to Friday night. Oh, is it we'll moved off my, that. my yes. apologies? That's, but so. yes, there are a lot of Class E games and thank God for that because these... <laughs> There's too, too many lights right now. Well, well let's start with uh, one of those games under the lights. Old Orchard Beach at Dirigo, and uh, the Cougars got in the wind column last week and uh, should be favored to, to get back in there again this week. Yeah, I think uh, Old Orchard's still young. Uh, a couple of years ago, they made a playoff run, and they're, they're kind of back in that rebuilding mode. Dirigo, really disappointed, I'm sure, with how they played most of that game against Freeport in the opening week if you throw out the second quarter. They definitely got back in a winning frame of mind, albeit in a tough road environment at Winthrop. Brian Blackman had a huge game, uh, played a little banged up, kind of reminded me of what Jeff Turcott did for Lewis in the Class A game, went to the bench for a while, came back, ground out some tough first downs to protect that 36-30 to win. Durgo can do a lot of things. They've got Brian Blackman as a workhorse. He's got some speed, but they can also throw the ball with Ben Holmes. A little bit of diversity there. Old Orchard's going to find it tough to stop all those weapons, I think. Uh, the other Friday night game, as Mr. Oaks has uh, corrected me, is uh, Lisbon at Booth Bay. It used to be a, a big-time rivalry in uh, the Campbell Conference. Been a little lopsided the last few years. Uh, the Greyhounds with a, uh, a pretty thorough beating of Old Orchard Beach last week. How do we see this one? Well, Booth Bay, you know, I, I think they stood up tall the first week against Winslow and gave them a tough game. So they're an opponent that's not going to be a pushover. They were heavily dominated by freshmen and sophomores when I saw them last year, and I think those kids are a year year older and a year stronger. But uh, Lisbon, just uh, as you saw on Saturday against Old Orchard, uh, they, they can do too many things. When, you, when your backup quarterback is throwing the ball and engineering the offense the way Zach Splood has the first two weeks, I think it says a lot about your program. It's typical of Lisbon that different kids step in when they're called upon, and it, it really doesn't matter. They buy into Coach Minahan's system there. And I think you're looking at another strong win as Lisbon continues to build slowly toward that week five game against Yarma. No, probably the, the biggest week three matchup in terms of playoff implications, I guess if you can call it that this early in the season, Poland at Oak Hill. Two teams looking at that middle to lower tier now of, of reaching the playoffs based on the way they played in the first two weeks. Uh, Two teams obviously not very familiar with each other, so uh, what do we got here? I think this is typical of Oak Hill. They have their toughest games at the start of their schedule every year, it seems like, plus they get Miranda Cook at the end. And in between, they can usually develop some momentum and get something rolling, and they'll have a chance to do that at home against Poland. Poland, of course, which team is going to show up? Is it going to be the Knights that really took care of the football and, and, and dominated the clock and ran the ball at will against Sockby Valley? Or is the team that got trounced by Morena Cook? I think we're going to find out. It's going to be a different challenge. Back to Saturday afternoon football for Poland, certainly at Oak Hill. And uh, Oak Hill, they've been able to develop the running game a little bit, certainly in week one with, with Cody Depew, with Cody Collingwood. The turnovers were a problem. I think at Yarmouth, didn't really matter what you were bringing to that game. I, I think Yarmouth is so head and shoulders right now, but everybody else in Class C that I'm not going to read too much into that. Oak Hill can't afford to go to 0-3. You can go 1-2 and two and make the playoffs. I think Poland would still have some hope if that happens to them. Oak Hill cannot go 0-3 for sure. A matchup of expansion football present and expansion football future, Telstar at Freeport. Freeport's off to an excellent start this year. Telstar, you finally saw them at full strength last week. Yeah, I think Freeport's the team that Telstar might want to take some, some courage from and some encouragement from. A couple of years ago, Freeport was getting shellacked by everybody. I remember that 76 to 8 game or whatever it was up to Dixfield. Two years later they go up to Dixfield on a Friday night and win. They're 2-0. and They're impressive. They're big up front. I think Telstar knows that's going to be a challenge. Telstar definitely a new dimension with Dom Haynes at quarterback. They're able to move the ball a little bit against Winslow, especially in the second half when Winslow was shuffling in its second and third teams. Kind of what Telstar is more used to, playing that JV level opponent. And Telstar was able to do some nice things, but uh, going to be a challenge again at Freeport uh, and, and as we said 0-3 probably isn't going to get you to the playoffs. Back on the Friday night slate Winthrop at Sockapee Valley a chance for the Ramblers to get healthy after last week's loss to Deerigo. Yes yeah, and the, the, the sandwich games of Telstar and Sockapee around that Deerigo loss it, it, definitely uh, the Ramblers should be 2-1 and one when they come out of South Hiram and, and going down the stretch they've got some tough games. 
you know, with Oak Hill and Miranda Cook ahead on the schedule, nearby, close rivals both on the field and ge geographically, Winthrop's got to get through this game healthy, win it, and build something for the middle part of the season. That'll do it for the week three edition of Tailgate Talk. Come back next week. Check us out again. We'll be at sunjournal.com, SJ Varsity. Check out all of our coverage in the print edition and online throughout the week. Not just high school football, but soccer, cross country, and every other fall sport there is, I think, except uh, hunting. Have a good week, everybody. We'll see you next week.